In July 2003, African Union at its ordinary assembly in Maputo, Mozambique, declared that 10% of agricultural allocation from the budget annually be allocated for the development of agriculture to ensure food security in the African continent. Fifteen years on, what is the impact of the allocation on smallholder women farmers in Nassau State? Government at all levels expend huge resources in procuring farm inputs and distribute same to its teeming farmers. But all these efforts, according to some women farmers in the state, is merely men-dominated show as it has not addressed their plight. President Buhari-led administration since coming on board has continued to initiate women-oriented measures such as three-month repayment meritorium for all trader money, market money, and farmer money loans, as well as a conditional cash transfer, especially the additional one million households ordered by the president to be included in the National Social Register with smallholder women as beneficiaries. In February 2020, Nasser State Government procured and distributed eight trucks of fertilizer to dry season farmers at a rate of 4,000 naira, while another 31 trucks were distributed in May this year across the 13 local government and 16 development areas of the state at a rate of 5,000 naira per bag. However, the about 1,300 registered smallholder women farmers organization of Nigeria, Nasser State Chapter, since establishment in 2012, is yet to benefit from these laudable gestures, except the trainings organized by national body of the organization. NBS News crew visited five local government areas of Nasser State, namely Awe, Akwanga, Kokona, Karu, and Wamba to sample smallholder women farmers' role and challenges as the 2020 wet season farming commences amidst movement restrictions occasioned by coronavirus pandemic. The first port of call was Caroline Peters' residence in Awe local government area, a hard-working mother of three, struggling with paper nurseries she managed to fence locally to prevent them from being damaged. After a short distance walk, we arrive at Sarah Albert's residence, a pig farmer who has a unique way of inviting her pigs, like the headers depicting human-animal relationship and what many will refer to as proof of ownership. <laughs> My challenge with this pig farming is the way people use to kill them. If at all I can get support of herbicides, fertilizer and money because the farm is almost losing its swell nutrient. To locate their hired farms, we took a four kilometer ride to their half hectare maize, melon, granite, rice, soybeans, beneseed and yam farms, each situated at the same location with the expectation that they pay 50,000 for half hectare rice farm, while another 20,000 is doled out for half hectare to farm other crops, compounding women's challenge of access to farmland. Sarah Shambua is another committed ginger smallholder woman farmer in Wamba local government area that is grasping for breath due to lack of access to farmland and inputs with movement restrictions imposed by government which effect is biting harder on the household is no thanks to coronavirus pandemic. Sarah and her husband Isaiah are cracking rocks as they can barely put food on their table due to their inability to sell soap and coconut oil they produce to support themselves owing to the lockdown, while their chances to farm quarter a hectare this year is very slim. <laughs> The in a Kwanga local government area, the searchlight was on Lama Elam, a passionate smallholder woman farmer and a mother of three whose cassava, rice, maize, granite and guinea corn farms are located along Wamba Road, eight kilometers from Akwanga town, lamented the hike in hiring private tractor for five hours at a rate of 50,000 naira and regretted the near absence of government-owned mechanized tools in the state. Lama Elam and her husband Timothy advise families to venture into agriculture despite the challenges in order to support their daily running costs and ensure food sufficiency, especially now that government is depending on agriculture to grow the economy. Another challenge we have is access to farm. We have need of farmland for farming. We 
we have a very big land this year because we are renting it. Yes, it's based on agreement. Cultivating it will not be a problem. These people give out their land based on yearly agreement. And so you could have the land this year and next year it might not be open. Juliet Serki of Kokona Local Government Area is a devoted smallholder woman farmer whose life depends totally on maize, melon, beneseed and granite farming to cater for children's school fees and other upkeeps. Hap on her chances to farm this year because of fertile land, lack of access to improved seeds, other farm inputs and funds to support her farming activities at the center of coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> If I been receiving farm inputs, my production capacity will have been better improved. The story in Cairo local government area where Dorothy Katampe, a maize and beans farmer, resides is not impressive considering her inability to farm more than two crops for lack of funds, subsidized mechanized tools, and farm inputs among sundry issues. However, Dorothy, her husband Akila Katampe, and one of their daughters have resorted to rearing rabbits, chicken, and palm oil production, all in a bid to cope with the effects of lockdown as well as post COVID 19 impact. Said Commissioner for Agriculture and Water Resources, Professor Otaki Alanana, said although farm input distribution has always been channeled through the local government authorities for onward distribution to target farmers, but if the outcry among women farmers of no access to the said input persists, the ministry will seek for governor's approval for a direct allocation to women groups in future distribution. But to involve women in all activities, even our development partners, the United Nations, uh, what they call the World Bank IFAD project, uh, IFAD project value chain development program, uh, is a program of the World Bank in league with the Federal Minister of Agriculture in Abuja, as well as Minister of Agriculture here in Lafayette as well. The emphasis is on women. Uh, it also interests you that our Japanese uh, embassy is partnering with us as our development partners. They have the JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency, where emphasis is placed on women. We have a program called SHED, Small Holder Horticultural Empowerment Program. It's mainly for women who are supposed to go into agriculture, particularly into horticulture for, uh, for public use. I mean, for uh, We are supposed to empower them there. These are some of the areas that women are really fully engaged in agriculture in the state. In all the five local government areas visited, smallholder women farmers shared similar concerns of herders invading their farmlands and insect infestation, among others. To sustain smallholder women farmers' contribution to the growth of the economy and guarantee food sufficiency, urgent mechanism is needed by the government to ensure direct allocation of farm inputs and other incentives to women farmers' groups in the state if their tears must be wiped off. This report was made possible with support from International Budget Partnership. Samson Juna reported.